photo of Earth rising over the lunar landscape. The photo is really misnamed because the moon is tidally locked to Earth. So Earth is always in the sky, on the near side of the moon, always. So it only was rising because, in fact, they were figure-eighting around the moon and Earth rose up. That photo, we all know it. Earthrise over the moon. There was Earth, seen not as the map maker would have you identify it. No, the countries were not color-coded with boundaries. It was seen as nature intended it to be viewed. Oceans, land, clouds. We went to the moon and we discovered Earth. I claim we discovered Earth for the first time. How does that affect culture? I got a list. You could, you could take apart this list and come up with an explanation that does not directly reference space for everything on this list. You could probably do that. But I take a step back and I look at that list and I say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, how is it? Let's back up to 1962 briefly. Rachel Carson publishes Silent Spring. The Green Movement typically credits that as the birth of, uh, birth of ecology, the birth of caring about the environment. It was a best-selling book. I have a different view. Maybe it planted some seeds, maybe it tilled the landscape. But stuff didn't really start happening until after that photo of Earthrise Over the Moon was published. 1968, the whole Earth catalog is published. There's a version before that photo is printed. The instant that photo comes out, that is the identifying cover picture of the whole Earth catalog. Thinking about Earth as a whole, not as a place where nations war, as a whole. Seven months later, 1969, we land on the moon. 1970, we're still going to the moon. We go until 1972, so watch this sequence of events. 1970, the Comprehensive Clean Air Act is passed. There were two other versions of that in the 60s, 1963 and 67, but the most important rendering of that act came in 1970. Earth Day was birthed March 1970. The Environmental Protection Agency was founded in 1970. There was a film called The Hellstrom Chronicle. It was one of the first documentary, pseudo-documentaries to actually get first run in the theaters. It was all about insects, kind of, it was a scare movie about insects and what role they might play on our food supply as we go forward. But it got us thinking about nature. The organization Doctors Without Borders was founded in 1971. Where do you even get that phrase from? No one thought of that phrase before that photo was published. Because every globe in your classroom has countries painted on it. Doctors Without Borders, 1971. DDT gets banned, not right after Rachel Carson's book, gets banned in 1972. We're still going to the moon. We're still looking back to Earth. Clean Water Act, 1971. 1972, Endangered Species Act. Two versions of that in the 1960s. The, the most comprehensive version, 1973. The catalytic converter gets put in in 1973. Unleaded gas, 1973. We're still at war in Vietnam. There's still campus unrest. Yet we found the time to start thinking about Earth. 
That is space operating on our culture, and you cannot even put a price on that. That is, that is a nation, that is a world reacting to a new perspective on what it is to be alive on this planet that we all share.